back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com to another blog. Welcome to those who access the podcast through the Be Young Ministry YouTube channel. Today we continue in our new study of the book of, according to uh, the Apostle Paul, written to the Philippians. We're in Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11, which reads, And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Again, that's Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. When we enter into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus, what is dear to be Him becomes dear to us. This is why the Apostle prays that the Philippians, here in verses 9 through 11 of chapter 1, would experience a deep and meaningful love for each other. In verse 9, the Apostle prays that our love may abound more and more. The Greek word translated abound describes the bubbling up and flowing over of a spring of water. A natural spring should never run dry, even in the driest of summers, because of its source. In our case, the source is the Lord Jesus himself. And as long as we walk with him, the sky is the limit. His love constantly flows, and he Loves enough for our benefit and the benefit of others. This spring keeps none of its water to itself. So true love flows out of the Christian to others. God loved and gave. Christ loved sinners and gave himself for us. Therefore we love and give. In verse 10, he prays that the kind of love that they would experience would result more in knowledge and depth of insight so that they may be able to discern what is best. Love acts like hate when it refuses to think. Love acts like hate when it refuses to think correctly. This kind of love must come with knowledge out of good relationships which lead to wholeness that Paul describes as pure and blameless for the day of Christ. It has everything to do with the way we think and how accurately we think. Our understanding of this love must be defined by God. And it must be experienced by us from him. If not, it's not going to be all these things that Paul is asking God to produce in these Philippians. The word pure in the Greek means without wax. In the ancient world, oftentimes they would make little statutes which would develop cracks. In order to pass these off as perfect, some of the merchants would fill the cracks with wax so that the crack was not observable. There was a way to find out if there were cracks in it. They would put the item out in the hot sun for a while. If there was wax, the sun would melt it and crack. the crack would become, a, would become visible. So it was sun-tested. Paul is saying that the Christian life, when motivated by God's love, will be without hypocrisy or without wax, pure. <clears throat> love can make us whole, but it's not automatic. His love could make us whole in the context of our relationship with him and subsequently with others. We do not supply what's missing. God is the only one who can do this. 
and he does it through the way that we he relates to us and we relate to him and then how we relate to others it's a long process doesn't happen overnight but love just doesn't make us whole love orients us outward toward other people Paul says the final test is that we are filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus. This fruit is not just for us. It's also for others. Fruit doesn't serve the fruit tree. It brings life outside of itself. Love gives us something to make the lives of the people around us better. When we choose to love someone, we help to bring life to them. Of course, if we are loving them so that they will love us, that will short-circuit the process. No, we've got to be motivated by the fact that God is defining us by his love. And his love for us is enough. Our fruitfulness is for others' benefit. This is the love that orients us toward others. And it's a powerful kind of love. When we are connected by the eternal work of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are brought together to be a part of the body. Once we have experienced his love for us, once we are in the family, we discover that we belong to each other. Since God is our father and Jesus is our brother, we are loved and drawn together by our common purpose which God makes happen. We belong because we are loved by the author of love and he is addressing the brokenness that is not only in us but is in all of the world and he addresses the brokenness of the world through us. The fruits of righteousness mentioned in verse 11 are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5.23 Two, we read, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These fruits are not produced by the believer. The Holy Spirit produces these. The believer yields these fruits as the Holy Spirit produces them. God is always looking for our willingness to be the vessels of his expression. In 2 Chronicles 16, 9, we read, For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Our hearts must be defined by him and none other. When this is the case, we can love others as we ought, purely and blamelessly. Finally, at the end of verse 11, we read to the glory and praise of God. This is the goal of the one who is himself being loved by the God of all creation. As this prayer of the apostle is realized in our lives, as our knowledge and depth of insight increase, we naturally give credit where credit is due. As Cicero once said, gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. My friend, I trust this podcast and this blog is helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.